so as I have told, this is the data what we will be using for determining the assay. You have TBP data and then different types of distillations are available. One of them is ASTM D86, which is atmospheric distillation. And the other one is D1160, which is vacuum distillation. When you have these data, you can use them. And HISIS allows you to select the type of distillation. And using that, you can uh, generate some hyper components, which will replicate crude what you have. Moving on to the next step. Yes, property package selection. Now, this is very important in uh, actually developing your proper simulation because different property package will have a different vapor liquid equilibrium data and that will reflect the sizing process. So you will have to be very cautious in selecting appropriate property packages for the components what you have selected and for the operating range what you have for the entire plant. So now there are some guidelines available for selecting property packages. We'll just quickly go through it. So here, uh, this is one simple method which can be used. So you have to know whether your component is polar or non-polar. And if it is polar, you will know whether it's an electrolyte or non-electrolyte. And these polar components are generally used for chemical industries. So when it comes to oil and gas or other field, we generally don't go into this field. We fall in the other region of non-polar fat. So here in non-polar, you have a real component, which is in case of real components, you can go ahead and use Peng Robinson or, or RKSO or PLOG or PRBM, RKS and SRKSO Redlich Kuang equations of state models. And if it is pseudo or real, if your operating pressure is greater than one atmosphere, you can use Grayson or other property models defined here. In case of vacuum, you can go ahead and use BK10 and Ideal. And when it comes to oil and gas industries, we mostly follow Peng Robinson or Redlich Kuang or Swar SRK, and that are the generally followed uh, equations of state. Uh, continuing to the property package selection, uh, you have equation of state models and activity coefficient models. For the oil and gas industry, we will be following equation of state models mostly. Activity coefficient models will be used for chemical based industries and other things. So now in equation of state models, it's good for vapor phase modeling and liquids of low polarity. It's limited in ability to represent non-ideal liquids. There are few binary parameters required. Binary parameters are generally the, those are inbuilt into the simulation. You can still change them if you have actual plan data and you want to match your results. You can adjust the binary parameters to match it. But we generally don't do any of the changes in binary parameters. We only try to select different property packages to match what is being given in the vapor liquid data. So we'll try to adjust only the packages as a whole and we generally don't change the binary parameters to do that. So in coming on to the activity coefficient model, those are good for liquid phase only, can represent non-ideal liquids many binary parameters are required. So these are for chemical industries like pharmaceuticals or uh, other industries. So these are very less used in industry. Okay, so these are the general fluid packages which are recommended for oil and gas industries. Uh, now coming into TEG dehydration, PR is Peng Robinson. If you have sore water into, these are the type of system what is going to be used for your simulation. And these are the, some general guideline, what is the recommended property packages for each of the unit operations. So we have ethylene, so like when you have ethylene towers, you can go ahead with leak Kessler blocker. When you have reservoir systems, you can use PR. And when you have steam systems, you can use steam packages, hydrate inhibition, PR. So the, as I said earlier, like most pro, most commonly, we'll be using Peng Robinson equation of state. And certain times, we also go ahead with SAR Peng Robinson and SR. When you select a stream on your simulation environment, you will have inputs that are to be provided. So you can specify the vapor fraction, pressure, temperature. So the out of these three, you need to specify at least two of the parameters. 
either your pressure temperature or your vapor fraction and then you should specify the composition of each component selected and your flow rates. So in the earlier slides we have seen the degrees of freedom. So you should satisfy the degrees of freedom to completely converge each stream. So when you specify any two of the stream, two of the parameters like vapor fraction, pressure and temperature and composition and flow rate, your stream gets converged. And once your stream is converged, your first step is completed. So with the converged stream, you will be able to, by selecting property packages, and defining components and then converging the stream, then you have a utility available in ISIS, which will give you option to develop phase diagram. So most of you would have seen this phase diagram during your college time. So this is a typical phase diagram wherein you will have a bubble point curve, dew point curve. So this is your bubble point. And here is the critical point. And coming down, these are the dew point line. So this is with respect to pressure and temperature. So once you are between this region, your bubble point and dew point, your components exist in two phase. And once you are outside the dew point, it exists in vapor phase. And once you are outside your bubble point curve, your component exists in liquid phase. And when you are above this region, it goes to dense phase, which means you cannot differentiate and the critical point, all three phases coexist. So this regions are a little tough in determining. So once you are in this two phase region and liquid region or vapor region, it's easier for you to analyze the properties. So this is the typical phase PT phase diagram, which is available. You can develop similar diagram in Aspen Isis as well, which will give you a typical graph like this. And here the red squares shows your bubble point and the blue triangle shows your dew point curves. So as I said earlier, the region in between these two will be the two phase region and the region beyond this red lines are liquid phase and beyond this blue line are vapor phase. So based on your temperature pressure conditions and this curve will tell you how much is your vapor fraction. Like if your vapor fraction is one, it is completely vapor. If your vapor fraction is between zero and one, that is two phase. And if it's below zero, then it comes to liquid phase. So this curve depends on the components you have selected and it also depends on the type of property package you have selected. So this curve, if you are able to match with the data what you have and by selecting appropriate comp property packages, then your first step of selecting property package is correct. So you can be sure of proceeding to the next level. And this data will be generally available from laboratory test. We sometimes have, but when we have data, we can compare with the VLE generated in the ISIS and you can be sure of doing it right. Now coming on to flash calculations. I would have done flash calculations during your college times. So that is generally based on the component and the uh, temperature and pressure it gives you uh, calculating the vapor fraction in the component so now as i have explained earlier a bubble point curve dew point curve for the mixture of components can be generated using envelope utility bubble point temperature of the stream can also be calculated yeah so now if you want you have a mixture of components in HISIS and you need to know the if you are interested in determining the bubble point of that component, you can specify vapor fraction as zero and you can tell the pressure at which you are operating. Then HISIS automatically tells you the bubble point temperature of that component. And similarly, uh, when you want to determine the dew point of the mixture of components you have, then you can fill in the components, you can enter the composition and provide the mass flow rates. And then coming on to those three parameters, pressure, temperature, and vapor fraction, you just have to enter vapor fraction as one and give the operating pressure. ISIS automatically tells you the dew point temperature of that system. Now specifying 
pressure and temperature of stream, vapor fraction of the stream with specified conditions can be obtained. This as I have told earlier, if you specify your pressure and temperature, ISIS will automatically calculate the vapor fraction for you based on the components in the composition indicated. As I explained earlier, you can also determine the bubble point temperature and dew point temperature of the mixture of components. So this is what we typically do in flash calculations during our college times and this ISIS does very quickly. So this slide will tell you what are the different stream properties that can be quickly obtained from ISIS. So when you have a different uh, mixture of components, you can determine the mixture density of the entire stream. You can determine the critical properties of the stream. You can have the standard gas flow rate. So this, what does standard gas flow rate mean? You have standard conditions is zero PSIG pressure and 60 degree F Fahrenheit as uh, temperature under this condition whatever is your flow rate that will correspond to the standard gas flow rate so once your pressure increases uh, the portion of your gas condenses to liquid phase similarly when your temperature increases if you have a two-phase liquid then as the temperature increases the liquid gets vaporized to the gas phase so at operating conditions maybe you will have a different gas flow rate but when you uh, just for as your operating conditions vary across the entire plant as a general guideline we specify the standard gas flow rate which is at a specified condition and this remains common so this will be a typical way of referring the composition of the flow rate so that you can arrive at the gas flow rate at different operating conditions and that's why standard condition flow rates of gas and liquids are generally provided you can determine mass heat of vaporization which is actually latent heat of the liquid and these parameters will be used for your psv sizing so your mass heat of vaporization will help you to determine in case of fire how much amount of vapor will be generated from the liquid and that is the mass heat of vaporization which is generally BTU per LB so if you have so much of heat input how much mass flow rate of vapor will be generated from the liquid and we'll be going in detail of those when we go ahead and do PSV sizing for fire case we can determine enthalpy of the stream CP by CV of the stream these are the different stream properties which can be obtained in ISIS. This will tell you of different miscellaneous unit operations which are available in ISIS. So there are some situations wherein you need to, you have your mass flow rate and you need to adjust the required volumetric flow rate. So in that case you have to iterate many a times using different values to determine your required volumetric flow rate. So in that case ISIS will give you a unit operation called adjuster which will do the iteration on its own. You just have to define the final required value and you need to know which parameter is to be adjusted to, uh, to get the required value. In that case, you can use the adjuster operation and determine the value quickly. So that is one miscellaneous unit operation which is very useful for us to use. And in some cases, uh, in the flow sheet, you will uh, you have values like your temperature of this stream has to be also fed to another stream in that case you can use set operation so set unit operation does when you have a determined temperature in one stream and you want the same temperature to be used for another stream as an input in your flow sheet then you can straight away use set unit operation. So whenever this temperature changes, automatically uh, ISIS will change the temperature of the other stream where you have used the set operation. And then you have balance unit operation as well. When you have to use the composition of one stream and you uh, same composition for another stream, you can use that balance unit operation. So every time when it runs, the composition of this stream will automatically get fed to the other stream. That is one useful miscellaneous unit operation which is available in ISIS. And uh, there is also a spreadsheet option. So sometimes you may have a scenario like you have a temperature and every time you need to add some value to that temperature and fed as an input. Say you have your temperature value as 60 and you want to add some 20 degree F onto that and input 50. And during the simulation, if your value changes to 70, you need to automatically change to 90. In that case, you can use a spreadsheet operation 
wherein you can use these sort of manipulations of inputs and then use them for your flow sheet. That is helpful. And this unit operation of spreadsheet will help you in doing. These are the different miscellaneous unit operations which are available. Uh, this is one utility which is available in HiSys, which is plotting bubble point curves. This we have already seen in our earlier slides. How does an envelope look? And it also gives you TXY, PXY plot. And these plots, when we get into distillation topics, we'll understand the importance of these plots. And these are uh, required to determine if there are any azeotrope formation in the distillation for your operating conditions. And if there is an azeotrope, then we can adjust the parameters and see how we get away from the azeotrope. And then we can determine the number of stages required for separation. These plots will tell you if there is any azeotrope formation or if there is no. Then based on by seeing the plot, you can determine the azeotrope formation. Yeah. We are almost nearing the end of the presentation. So can we believe in simulation results? Um, this simulation results generally what happens, it directly calculates what is being given as an input. So once you have any problem in your inputs, then definitely your output will also have a problem. So it is your duty to have a proper inputs and you have to verify whether your output what you are received is realistic. If you have given a vague input, then definitely your output will also be vague. It doesn't tell you that this input is wrong. It directly gives you an output value. So it's just a numerical methods which solves the equation and will let you know the result. So in that case, you should be careful in determining your results. So the different problems what can occur is improperly selected thermodynamic models or inadequate models, incorrect hypothetical component generation. And then if there are any inconsistency in the data input, that also can lead to the problems. So we should be careful in providing our inputs properly to have a proper output. Uh, yeah, uh, these are simple tips in process modeling. The build model one step at a time. People new to this want to start by adding many streams and unit operations. What we advice is not to have all streams and then start developing the entire flow sheet you if you go unit operation wise like first converge the stream and then converge your unit operation and output and then go on to the next unit operation that will be helpful for you to properly converge the system if you go ahead and add all the unit operations and then start converging at a time then you will have problem in identifying your mistakes keep saving your simulation in between so that if once you change when you have a problem of inconsistency error or something then view if you have a older version of your simulation saved then that will help you to quickly recover what is being done and then while de defining streams uh, you can use proper naming for each stream so that when you have to define from one stream to other or when you have to look at properties in the workbook it will be helpful for you so it is good to always put proper stream name then if a piece of equipment does not work although the parameters are look reasonable sometimes you need to delete it and then re-input the values because as there are a lot of equations being solved at the back end there might be some problem with the operation. So if you can quickly delete and re-input the values, you can avoid such errors. With this, we'll be completing this module and we'll have a quick overview of the simulation once we get into the next module.